Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you how to add or modify icons to your Ventoy USBs. So what we're looking at today is the Ultimate USB version 2. And as you see, these are all the directories at the root level, and they all have nice pretty icons next to them. Um, however, these are fully customizable once you guys get them, or if you build your own. Uh, so if you add new ISOs, which we've done lately on our little side quest, our WinPE discovery quest, uh, we found two new really good WinPE environments in OnkTech and Bob Oms. Um, I've added them to the Ultimate USB version 2, the greatest USB on the planet. If you guys haven't picked one up, I've got a link down below. Don't even trip. Go ahead, head over there, check it out. This is an awesome USB. It's the best one ever made. Um, if you want to support the channel, think about picking one up. All right, guys, so these are the two new ones that we added, like I said, but there's no icons there. So today I'm going to walk you through how to add the icon. So this is applicable to anyone that's already bought the Ultimate version 2 or anyone that has a Ventoy USB and they want to know how to get those images, um, customize images, things like that on your USB. All right, so I just want to show you this is what it looks like before we modify anything. And then we'll come back and boot into this again after we get that all added. So for now, I'm going to power off this virtual machine and that'll free up our flash drive to work with. Okay, so I do keep a working copy, or I should say like a master copy on one of my hard drives for all of my flash drives that I work with. I also have backups of them, of course, but this is my D drive, and we have the Ultimate version 2, so this is where we're going to be working today. I did uh, go in beforehand and download two new pictures uh, that I'm going to use for those, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So if you guys put this USB in your um, computer after your computer's already booted, you're just going to see a file structure just like this. You're going to want to go into your Ventoy folder, which is like your configuration folder, and then you're going to go into Themes. Now, I'm only, I'm only using a single theme on this. I did build a whole bunch of them in originally, but I had some issues with getting it to stick as far as the default one. Um, let me know if you guys are interested in how to have multiple themes or switch themes. I can make a separate video on that. But today, IT Unicorn is the theme we're working with. And as you can see, this is the background, probably looks familiar. Uh, within the themes, IT Unicorn, the selected theme that is older, Go to your icons folder. Here's all of the icons that are available or that I have uploaded for this particular USB. So I added the OnkTech. And you guys can add any picture you want if you think this is dumb for OnkTech and you want to put like a uh, Egyptian figure or whatever. I know that's kind of the theme of the OnkTech. Feel free. I mean, you can put whatever you want here, literally. And then for bob bombs, I use the little uh, Mario-style bomb guy. So now that you have those uploaded into the icons folder, you're going to want to go back to your Ventoy folder and you're going to want to go to the Ventoy.json. I'm going to show you a way to do this through the GUI as well. I just think it's quicker and more efficient to do it through the actual JSON file. A uh, good thing to do here, guys, if you haven't done so, copy this before you modify it and put a copy on your desktop or in a separate folder outside of your USB. That way, if you mess something up in the JSON file, just replace it with the original and go from there. All right. So what you're going to want to do is open with Notepad. If you have a better text editor that you prefer, Notepad++, whatever it is, feel free to use that. Okay, so you have a bunch of different uh, sections to the JSON file. We are worried about the menu class today. You'll see a bunch of entries. The ones that say DIR are the pictures for the directories. So like multi-tool is a directory itself. So we'll see that here. Here's multi-tools. Uh, one thing to note on the... Um, well, really, we're focused on the keys today, so I'll focus on that when I talk about it. But just know that directory is for the directories. And then anytime you see class, this refers to the name of the picture file, so the PNG or whatever you have. But keys are for the individual um, ISOs within those directories, right? So if you have an entry that says key, Cali, class Cali, that means the the uh, ISO file Cali should have the picture Cali. Now, there is a caveat to note here, guys, uh, on the key this is like a matching substring. You can have the complete string as well, but for key, it's just looking for anything that has Kali in the name of that ISO file. Um, so you don't have to put the whole thing here, and that's good because let's say you're running Kali version, I'm just gonna throw a random number, Kali version five, and now they got Kali version 5.1. If you hard-coded Kali version 5.0 and then you upgraded your ISO, you'd have to come back here and upgrade this, but if, if both of them contain Kali, then you're good to go. Hopefully that made sense. 
Now for the class part, which is the actual picture file, this has to be a verbatim match. It's not a substring match. So what we're going to do here today, guys, is we're going to add two new keys. You can add them anywhere you want. Just make sure you pay attention to the syntax. They all have a comma trailing the closing bracket with the exception of the very last one in the section. And we yes, we do have a lot of pictures here, guys. So you'll see the very last one is a directory I added. I think I did Batacera last. So that closing bracket does not have a comma. You can add it anywhere you want. Top, bottom doesn't really matter. Uh, I'll just go here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy two of these. So it starts with an opening bracket and it ends with a closing bracket comma. So if I just go like that, make some room, and then I paste. Now I should have Batacera and Fedora repeated. Batacera and Fedora. Okay. So now since those are duplicates, we obviously don't need those. I'm going to delete the contents and then we'll fill it in with our stuff. So now we need to look at our keys, which again are the names of the ISOs. So to do that, we want to go back to the root of the USB, which is here, and then multi-tools. And then we need to get the name of our ISOs. Again, I wouldn't use the whole thing. So I'm going to go here, OnkTech. We'll start with that guy. And I'll pop this dude in the key. And then we do need to find his co corresponding class. But since we're in this multi-tools already, let's do Bob Oms as well. Again, you only need a substring, so let's just go to there. And we'll pop him in the key. And now let's go to our icons folder. So we need to go back, go to Ventoy, and then we'll go to themes, go to the IT Unicorn, which is the active theme, icons. And then for OnkTech, that's the name of our um, image file or picture file. So make sure you got this exact. If you have any typos in here, you leave out a letter, it will not work. You'll have no image and you'll know it pretty quick when you boot. Okay, cool. So we'll put that in there and we're all done here. We just save and that's it. You can close your JSON file. Now, as I said, I was going to show you a way to do this through the GUI. If you guys have downloaded Ventoy, you want to go to the folder where you've extracted Ventoy. I always put a shortcut to the Ventoy to disk because I use this part of Ventoy a lot to create the new USBs. So if you have done that, you can right click and say open folder location. If not, just go to the directory where you have extracted your Ventoy zip file. Okay, now within here you have obviously Ventoy to disk, but you also have the plugs on. You're going to launch that, accept your UAC. Pull that over where you can see it. Select the USB that you want to work with. In this case, it is the H drive because I was working on creating an Ultimate V2. So I'll hit start. This should open a browser tab. So this gives you a graphical interface. Let me shrink this down a little, guys. Sorry. Had it zoomed in for the virtual machine. Okay, so the plug song gives you a graphical interface for the uh, Ventoy configuration. Basically, this is just a way to do it through the UI where you're modifying that JSON file. So today we we're worried about the uh, menu class. And as you see, this is a GUI representation of all those lines of code in the JSON file. So if you wanted to add one here, you can click add and that'll bring you to a GUI. Basically another little dialog box where it says, okay, what image are you trying to, or what ISO are you trying to work with? You would browse to that. And then it would say, okay, what picture do you want to show up for that? And then you would browse to the picture and then you hit okay or whatever, and it'll add a uh, entry here. So you can certainly do that. I would recommend backing up your uh, JSON file either way, just to make sure you don't break anything. Speaking of that, I want to show you guys a JSON validator tool called JSON Lint. It's just, you don't have to download anything. It's just a web page. And this will tell you if your JSON file is valid, and it'll also point out any errors in the JSON file. So if we go back to our JSON file, and open that in Notepad one more time, slide that over, uh, Control A to select all, Control C to copy to your clipboard, and then we can come here, close the advertisement, paste in your JSON code, and click validate. JSON is valid. Great. But what if it's not? Okay, let's say I forgot a comma here for some reason. Validate JSON. It'll sh not only say invalid JSON, it'll give you a bunch of information, what line it's on, and it'll highlight it. So this is a very handy utility if you're working with JSON files. Because if you're hard coding a lot of this stuff or even just copy pasting, 
I've messed them up a lot of times. I'm not going to lie, especially when I was first learning all this. This is a great utility to show you, okay, there's where my error is. I can either just fix it because it's obvious or I can paste that into chat GPT or Google it or whatever. It gives you a really good starting point, save you a lot of time. So jsonlint.com, write that one down or jot it down. If you guys don't already have that in your toolkit, make sure you get that in your tool. All right, guys, so now that we have um, fixed all that, I need to go back and copy my JSON folder, I'm sorry, my Ventoy folder from my D drive. So ultimate USB Ventoy, I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go over to my flash drive that I'm working on. I'm gonna delete the Ventoy folder from here. And then I'm gonna paste that Ventoy folder in from my master copy on the D. And then we're gonna boot back into this and we should see two pretty new icons for those. I need to exit that so it stops running. Okay, back to VirtualBox. Let's fire this VM up. We'll get the USB attached, and then we'll validate our work by seeing two beautiful images, hopefully. All right, so devices. This is VirtualBox, and then we're going to attach the Transcend, which is the Ultimate version 2. And then we can reboot this machine. And type in the password, because this is a password-protected Ventoy USB. Close this, and let's go down to multi-tools, voila, baby. So we see Onctech now has a nice, pretty little icon, and Bob Oms has a pretty little icon as well. So that is a quick demo for you guys on how you can add images to your Ventual USB, whether it's at the directory level, the ISO level, how you can change them out, whatever you need to do. Um, I think this is just a very nice detail to make your USB stand out from everyone else's. And again, when you guys get these from me, if you're ordering them, first of all, thank you for the support. Uh, second of all, feel free to modify these as much as you please. Uh, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Everyone's palette's different, right? Um, so if you think these pictures suck, no worries. Make better pictures and share them with me. Maybe I'll say, hey, your picture's cool, man. Can I copy that into mine? Or, you know, just make it your own. I guess that's what I'm trying to say in a roundabout way. All right, guys, this was a sort of quick demo, kind of went long there, but uh, hopefully this added some value if you guys are interacting, creating, modifying Ventoy USBs. Uh, this should make you, if you're a beginner, this should take you up to that next level um, and really allow you to make these your own and create a really cool looking USB. All right, guys, thanks a lot for sticking around to the end. Share this video with your friends. If you found any value in it, please consider hitting that thumbs up. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel, guys. We're growing, and we're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so your support is definitely appreciated. All right, guys, hope you all have a great week. Take care.